We're just going live. No. This, this yeah. is Perch Bird's Eye. Get it. And we're back. <laughs> Welcome. Another episode. Perch Bird's Eye Podcast. Feels great to be back. Even though our office is, is open in Boston, it's it's open. It's people are trickling in safely sure. and following all compliances with the state and federal recommendations. I'm Good obligated one. to say that. Good disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. Important. It, it absolutely is, but special treat for you. Just like we have a special treat every episode, this is going to be a fun one. And this is someone part of our, our team and uh, Jared. Welcome. Thanks that, for might the, that might be the best. That might be the best entry. Uh, that was really good. <laughs> I was. really appreciate it. I'm just imagining I feel like, like it. the talent nest and Jared's like the mama bird of the nest here. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing us all out to fly. Have you been saving the mama bird? It's good no, to it know how to it's me. good to know how my team talks about me. The mama bird. <laughs> I, like that. Oh, good thing, I can't, Jared. I can't good. wait till this airs. Yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. New, new moniker here. Right. For, yeah. Well, uh, well, for for folks out there that don't know who you are, yeah, give a brief synopsis, Spark Notes version of who you are, what you do here, and how how you came to Perch, your journey, and then we'll get into the juicy meat and potatoes. Yeah. Wow, that's a loaded question, Brett. Um, Very much time. I feel like I need a couch and a lot of time. Um, let me lay, let me lay my life on you. Um, well, first of all, who I am, I'm a dad of two, um, and a husband and we live in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I was born and raised in the area. Um, my connection to Boston and Perch actually started about eight years ago when we kind of moved on a whim out to Boston. Um, and I had spent really my entire career in some form of talent, um, generalist work right out of college. And then Got into some more L&D training work, um, did kind of leadership succession planning, um, but never really touched recruiting. Um, and we were finally in, in Boston in a really cool hub and city, and I knew nothing about it. And um, I was working for the time for Manpower Group, and I was stationed out of a, um, a staffing location in downtown Boston. And there were people coming in and recruiters on the phone all day working with candidates. And I was like, this is pretty cool. Like I could, I think I could do this. Um, but I wanted to find something local. And so that took me to another local agency in Boston, uh, professional staffing group. And I think the best thing about that was just the brands that we got to work with. Um, you know, I got to work with BCG. I got to work with TripAdvisor, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, all the colleges of the Fenway and a few others. And it was a really great way to immerse myself into, uh, into Boston and in recruiting in the market. Um, and that ultimately, led me to Wayfair. Um, a friend from PSG pulled me over there. And that's where I got into, I guess, now the Perch ecosystem, if you will. I got to work with Chris a little bit there and, and Monty, our COO, and a few others on the exact team. Um, <clears throat> and I guess, long story short, started talking with Chris back in November. Um, at that point, it, it's kind of laughable. He said, hey, I think we need to uh, build a team of 60 to 70 by the end of the year. Do you think we can do it? And I think we're on track for 300. So um, things have changed a little bit. Uh, my role at Perch has also changed quite a bit um, from being the first person in talent to, I would say being a generalist majoring in recruiting, if you will. Um, and then fortunately added an awesome team along the way who most have started over the last few months. Um, so my role has fortunately been able to shift more towards TA and, and building a really kick-ass team. Sorry, I hope I can say that. Sorry, we, um, already, we already got the explicit label. So real, a real kick, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna bleep that out, right? <laughs> <Fuck> um, <laughs> but also a, a really cool um, and eclectic organization um, with a lot, really a lot of awesome people in, in Viewpoint. So that role, I'm sure like many's will continue to ebb and flow and change over time. But I think that's why everyone's at Perch because you have a chance to create what you want here and build something really cool, both for yourself and the organization. Yeah, Brett gave us the uh, the explicit label within, I don't know, five minutes of the opening uh, dialogue. <laughs> so Jared, that was awesome intro. Um, and I think bird's eye in and of itself is, is has always been a uh, maybe a little politically incorrect way to discuss continuous learning, growth, and and development. Um, 
And so essentially we're trying to create a discussion around turning adversity into advantage through the examination, ready for this, Brett, of all the things that we suck at. What are you reading off of? That was too good. Uh, what, I, what I wrote, what I wrote, what I wrote to intro this, that obviously you have both paid a lot of attention to. Um, but, but I, I would say this is the, the, the hook here has always been just tell us what you suck at. Um, yeah. Brett hates this question, but it gives us a, a little bit of uh, alignment in terms of where these conversations take us. So, so Jared, uh, without further ado, what, what, what do you suck at? Yeah. Well, first of all, I love that you didn't ask me ahead of time and this will just be a natural dialogue. So I'm really curious to see where you guys take this on the fly. Um, there's actually two things that I suck at and they, I think will be a little bit surprising based on my profession. And I'll explain that first is names. I am terrible with names. Um, the backdrop here though, is you could ask me about a candidate from 10 years ago and I could probably rattle off their comp expectations and when they would be willing to make a move. Like it's, it's recruiter brain, right? Like you guys probably have, it's recruiter brain, but it gets filled up with business and, and people that I work with on the day to day. So if I meet a neighbor for the first time, I'm gonna have to introduce myself or at least ask them to introduce themselves three or four times before their name really sets in. Um, and it's bad and I hate that, um, especially for a guy who's constantly talking and, and meeting with people all day professionally. Um, the other thing that I'm really bad at with dates um, or is dates, and you could probably actually boil that down to birthdays. Um, with the exception of my kids and my wife and me, thankfully, um, I like if you put me on the spot right now, I'm gonna have to look at my phone in my notes section to see when my nephew was born or even my dad. Um, don't judge. It's I, I don't know why names and dates. They just don't stick. That's, uh, I'm not judging you at all because I no, am sure. the literal same exact way. I'll be in a conversation with somebody where I've just asked them their name and then forget the rest of the conversation because I'm too busy worrying about the fact that I forgot their name that they told me literally <laughs> 15 seconds ago. Like yes. I, I can empathize with that so much. What, what's the, okay. So I can see that affecting, uh, personal professional life in different ways. And I have mm -hmm. a, my own way to combat this. Cause it's a, a thing that I definitely suck at, but what, I guess, what do you do to affect the outcome of that, uh, that problem that you have? Yeah. Oh, well, like I'm, I, I know it. Like I, I know when I meet someone that it, it's not just something I accept that I'm going to forget their name. I have tried. Um, I've actually tried something and that is what I didn't used to do when I meet someone is repeat their name. So I find if I repeat their name, like if I write something down, I'm more likely to remember it. So if you introduce yourself as, hi, I'm John, I'm going to say, hey, John, nice to meet you, rather than just, hey, my name is Jared. Because the second, it, second I just say, hey, my name is Jared, I'm gonna be like, was that Jim? Was it Joe? Wasn't John. Um, but if I repeat it, I'm, I'm more likely to remember it. Doesn't mean that it works. It just means that it's more likely to work. <laughs> Interesting. You, you repeat something three times though. Is, is that right? You should know that. <laughs> yes. Your name yeah. was Joe, Joe, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Joe, Joe, great to meet you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try to squeeze it in three times. <laughs> yeah. Three times. Yeah. I, so same problem. Names. Yeah. Terrible. We talked about that with, with another guest that, as well. We, mm. we joked about it. Okay. Well, that makes um, just pure better. memory, just pure memory. But uh, yep. my, my neighborhood, it's like, I live in a kind of small dead end and two of my neighbors are named Dave. So the first year I called every one of my neighbors, Dave, every single one of them. I was just like, Hey Dave, what's going on? Yep. Yeah, yeah. But it's, um, it's statistically you had a good chance, a better very, chance than anything very. else. So yep. sure. no, no one, no one corrected me. So the way that, the way that I've combated so I'm terrible at that. And I, I sort of chalk that up to being an identical twin. Cause everybody just called me the wrong name growing up. So I didn't think all that much of being called the wrong, <laughs> didn't bother me. Um, but I will. And I tell people this, when I get into meetings and I'm supposed to be doing intros, I sort of assume that everybody knows each other. And for myself, that directly comes from my own take on like being horrible at remembering names. I just will jump into a conversation and act like I've known the person for 15 years. Um, sometimes that'll get you into trouble. <laughs> and you just don't say their name ever? No, I, I immediately gloss over that. that so skip uh, the intro. Yeah. No, you're never going to remember just, it. Yeah, go like we've been, you know, we've already done it. A little bit of act as if there. But uh, if you ever see me in a meeting with like new people that, and Caroline and Brett would know this because we're in a lot of meetings together, I just jump in and start going right into the details or the content that needs to be discussed. And 
Yeah. I'll, I'll get called on not doing intros because I I'm horrible with them. Birthdays is interesting too. I, I definitely have the kids down, but I'm, I'm not great with birthdays. Yeah. I, can, I know the yeah. months. I'm usually generally pretty good with months, but I, the day is just. Mm. My, my two nieces are easy because one was born on March 14th. So Pi Day. And the other, mm-hmm. my other niece was, is May 10th. So it's just like 510. So it's like it, the five times two is 10. I don't know, whatever. But like, <laughs> it's my, my own thing. But like the recruiter thing you talked about, Jared, like yeah. completely yeah. true, right? Like, yeah. and I think about that too. When I like, when I, like my wife tells me like, you didn't remember this, like, what's your deal? Like, and I, I'll, Justin and I will talk about people that were working with time. like, oh yeah. my God, like I worked with this person yeah. 10 years ago. And this is the reason why they're looking to leave that, that role. This is what they wanted at the time. This is like mm-hmm. what their kid's name was. And like yeah. those details yeah. like will stick. So it's like, how can I make that? How can I translate that over into my everyday life? I haven't figured it out. Wait, yeah. I was just going to say, does room. anybody have a trick to get rid of recruiter brain? Because it's the same thing. People will be like, Caroline, like, why the hell don't you remember this conversation? We talked about this five times. Like it, I just like, I don't remember at all, but I could tell you this, like some candidate or something we talked about like, but I don't like, yeah. Tom bands from three companies ago. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any solutions here yet? <laughs> yeah. Part of my issue, Caroline, we've been talking about this in terms of like shutting down at night. I think that's part of it. Like I am the worst when it comes to like great with the hours from like four 30 to eight o'clock, right. Or with our kids, like phones are away, but I'm lying. If I say that I'm not thinking about work during that time. Right. Or like, the 15 candidates that I know that I have to action or something with my stakeholders. And so I think that plays into it, right? Like if I'm out on a weekend or meeting someone, I'm still probably thinking about work in some way. So like I meet that person and then they leave and I know that they're, this may sound bad, but like not a priority for my job, let's say. Um, And so those priority things for my job, I'm always gonna remember and probably repeat to myself a million times and take notes on. Um, And so I think it's like, creating that personal space um, to like create like meaningful change in terms of like what's important to you to remember and how you remember and everything else, which I, and again, very self-aware that I'm bad at, but working on. I haven't right, fully not, gotten there, but like, it, start, it starts I have with this accepting, idea. right? Yeah. <laughs> I have this idea that maybe if I write down enough, what it is that I need to like that I am thinking about about work and then make a really active decision to just like not do work then I don't have to in the back of my mind have like 30 percent of my brain space thinking about those things Mm -hmm. that I need to remember and can actively choose like okay I know this thing's not done but I'm not going to work right now anyway I'm working on it but I have a theory that that might be helpful versus just like having it linger thinking I I didn't do this thing but not choosing to to move on Mm -hmm. I, I worry about the, the, this is like a significant, fe- I don't know if this is a significant fear, but the interrupt driven nature of recruiting in general, especially if you're coming at this from like the headhunting world, like you are constantly just bouncing back and forth between things. And I, mm-hmm. I have the exact same problem, Jared, and my wife will call me out on this. I, I was, you used a less uh, aggressive example. I, I think my wife would tell you like when we go out on the weekends, I just don't pay attention to things. <laughs> as as much as i i do for for work and i think a big part of that is 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 you know the the stack ranked order of how just like life is set up with with the role and whatnot i think the biggest being super thoughtful about that and and that happening has tremendously helped me i would also say like i'm horrible at waking up at like and caroline knows this from years past but and brett does too like two in the morning i'll wake up and i can't sleep and all of a sudden i'm thinking about work and um being able to get away from COVID hasn't helped this, but being able to get away from my phone has, has like being very intentional about even where I physically place my phone Mm. um, does help. Brett, you should be the one lecturing all of us on this because you seem to have this whole like shut it off mastered. I don't know just because you're more stubborn (laughs) or less. I I don't know about stubborn, but I think it's more more disciplined i'd like to say (laughs) yeah i've always always been able to shut it off completely of like you know five o'clock well now now five o'clock like with with like the kid the young kid at home like before i mean me just want to work late all the time but like weekends forget about it like i I, I, but but i'm still 
I still have those, those issues, those challenges of, of forgetting things. Like it's not, I think for me, it's more about like, like cognitively being like present in the moment of like where, where you are in like that exact such scenario of like meeting someone and like, you're there for a reason or like in the moment of like, okay, we got this important thing going on. Like this is happening. Yeah. Okay. So what happens if a thought I'm, crosses I'm, your mind, like you're present and then you're like, oh, but I forgot to call whatever. Like, how do you put that thought away? So you're still present. So this is going to, might, might sound pretty bad, but it's like, I know in my heart of hearts that things after 5 PM and things on the weekends that nothing business related is truly going to get done until 9 AM the next morning at, at a, not everything, but like a good portion of them. So like the things that like mm -hmm. I need to action to, like, if I'm going to, if I have to schedule an interview and I'm scheduling it, if I am working at seven 30 at night, I know that's not going to get scheduled until the next morning or it's not going to get confirmed or I'm not going to get like, I'm not going to be able to get all those pieces like really in place until the next day. Anyway, it's on my to-do list, which I suck at anyway. Um, I don't know. I think I just, that that's the fact like of the matter for how I can shut it off. And like, I know I have to get to these things and I know that if I do it now, I know that things aren't, it's not going to impact until tomorrow morning or until Monday morning, unless it's a huge priority. Obviously we know that the things that happen and you got action right away. I get that. But and I don't want to sit here like a soapbox. Like I have it all dialed in. I'm present every moment and I remember everything because I, no. But I, I do, I will say like you, the, the other thing I would say just about, I, I have it for those listening that don't know this. I've been working with Brett for a long, long time. Um, and he has, I would say like, I've, I, I have, don't take, don't, don't let your head get bigger. with Shower this me. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there is, he is, a, I've found in him a nice balance to myself in the sense that like from a partnership lens, he'll tell me that I need to shut things off or things won't like, even if I'm thinking about something and I think it's a priority, he'll just be very polite to say like, hey, does this really matter? Like you don't need to get to this till tomorrow morning. Um, and that actually has helped me tremendously, but I think that is sort of like an active, like find somebody that you can you know, balance yourself out with. And, and a lot of times like my wife is really good for calling me out of that too. But I think at work, it, it has helped having somebody around me that sort of thinks completely differently in, in terms of being able to, maybe not completely differently, but being able to really like pull me out of some of the, the depths of just the, the work cycles that we get into. Yeah. Um, and we need yeah. to have a, a, a team training and just put Brett on his soapbox and just let uh, us all uh, have it. This big, this big head thing is just the, the hats, Carolina, the hats are going to have to keep getting deeper and deeper. Um, <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm happy to, to do a life coach, coach session. I, <laughs> I'll send you an invoice later, but. It sounds like we need it. All right. So we got that. So let's, if there's a way that we could figure out how to get that recruiter brain switched up, like, and, and manipulate it to such of our personal lives for like remembering names. All right. Now we need to figure that out. All right. the, the solution that I, like, I, have I like this I like this thought of being present and coaching ourselves to recognize when we're not because if I can if I could do that there are literally conversations where I'll be talking to my wife and she'll stop and she'll just be like you're kind of staring off into space like you're not you're not present and I'm like no I'm not I was just thinking about what I need to get to Chris or this candidate that's giving me a hard time and like I'm sorry <laughs> it wasn't on my phone but I definitely wasn't listening to you and and that's wrong and I think like if we can coach ourselves to recognize that in the moment and kind of refocus ourselves on what's important in that moment I really like that I'm going to take that as a takeaway for this is is to think about how to like be present in the moment because like that goes from meetings too right like oh. it's so easy to multitask today and we're all yeah, working especially home. We have multiple monitors i have a million things in front of me um i am probably about 75 percent present in each of my each of my meetings now i gave you guys full attention because you had me so nervous about a podcast that i was like i gotta shut everything else down um but i i do like it's helpful right if, if i wasn't present maybe i wouldn't have had a takeaway to remind myself to stay present that's so true. I've, I've, I'm a huge, huge offender, huge offender. Yeah. And I don't want to be, and I don't mean to be, but then I think that's also that recruiter brain of like the interruptions and like, and like, I'm just, 
easily distracted a little bit sometimes and kind of get get fixated on things. But let, let me throw a curveball at you all, though. Um, Fire away. I will. I will say one of the times so I've, I've gotten a lot better at being thoughtful about this, especially with my kids. Like I, I hate the fact that sometimes I'll be playing with my kids and like I'll actively notice now when I'm like starting to think about work off hours. So I've mm -hmm. I've tried to get better with that, and that's I think a work in progress and probably will always be. But I will say one of the things that I've noticed is when I'm on a call with a candidate and actually it's, it's more phone calls than video. Um, I think video, I have the ability to look at screens and whatnot and, and um, that can be positive and negative, but I do find myself being insanely present when I'm specifically talking to a candidate. Like I am, I'm very, very focused in those conversations. Mm -hmm. So if I can figure out the trick of how and why that happens and bring that to the rest of, of, I think life, that's uh that would be a, uh, I don't know if anybody else has found that, but I, I have definitely like, I'll hang up the phone and, and know that like my whole entire world for the last 30 minutes has been just the, that primary, you know, that conversation, that person. Um, so I got to figure out a way to carry that over into other aspects of life. Um, the only other way that I figured out how to do that is to get to a place where there's no cell phone or internet service and I don't need any devices. And it usually takes a day awesome. or two to shut off, but yeah. I think we like, we all also don't get me wrong. I love to unplug. It's one of the best things in the world. Um, and so like, I, I, all, I feel like I always have to explain to my wife, especially when I'm working late, like, it's not that I want to be working late. It's just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the recruiter and all of us that we have this like heightened sense of urgency or like we don't, I personally don't like it when people are waiting on me for stuff. And so I probably combat that with just always feeling like things are urgent, even when it's 930 at night and could probably be taken care of at 10 a.m. the next morning. I think, I think the chat, it's, you know, you, you, the, it's the, I, the, the other big thing that's helped me with that stuff specifically outside of Brett's big head is, uh, is actually having, is having these, the, like the teams that I've managed now, I've, I've actually, they know, um, that I a up super early, but that I also work a lot. And it's, I think that, like having the ability to be open and honest, like the expectations with my team is not that that happens, but people have gotten very comfortable sort of calling me out specifically at certain times when I'm working where like Caroline's really good at night between like six and eight o'clock being like, Hey, if, if you're with your kids, forget about this, that little reminder actually like I'll leave my phone alone when I see that, even though I don't know if everybody actually wow. realizes how big of a deal that is. Yeah. Um, oh, no. but I think being open about that with, with the group has helped because I've, you know, I've had, I've had people along the way that have pushed me to shut, to shut off when needed. Yeah. Big heads all around Caroline. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Brett, do we cover it? Are we good? We're right on time. Right on time. It's going to go down a rabbit hole of, of building a culture of, of accountability and oh openness boy. and ability to, you know, leaving room for folks to feel comfortable to say that to their teammates. And, you know, that's what, you know, I'm not going to toot our own horn and I'm not going to get on the, 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 we do everything right bandwagon, although I could, and Jared, you brought us all in here, in here. So it's all because of you, but okay. yeah, I, I mean, that's definitely something I feel like we can, it's, it's good to be able, you're, it's good to be able to open up about that with your teammates and be aware of that. So, all right, now we can figure out recruiter. Brand. Sounds like a good volume too. Yeah. We can talk about trust some other time. That's a deep conversation. Yeah. We need, we need more than 30 minutes for that one. Seriously, we needed that couch. I feel like this was a. I know. Pass the tissues, please. Emotional session. <laughs> hey. All right, Brett, take us out. This is all you. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, yeah, good. Great. Jared, keep working on, keep working on it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the sessions will continue and we'll all just continue to get better, but no, this is glad we finally got you on and appreciate you guys. Good Thanks to for having you. me. Next time for, for the next go around, we'll, we'll make this a little bit more, maybe a little bit more pointed. Might give you a little heads up ahead of time. What we're going to talk about. But we'll see. <laughs> Let's not you promise it though. We'll see. Like it. Good. Well, right. next time. Thanks Jared. Good stuff. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you, everybody.